Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, who has another movie review. This time I'm finally getting to Annabelle Comes Home, and I'll just go ahead and say I'd give it 1 out of 4. I thought this film sucked. It had a massive potential. This should have been the most fun of the Conjuring movies. Now, Conjuring 1 and 2 are both good. Um, first Annabelle sucks. Annabelle uh, Origins is a good flick. The Nun sucked hard. Um, <laughs> and, um, of course, the Lalo Rajarona, whatever, sucked. And now this one sucks. Uh, the acting here is good all around. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga are only in the beginning and the ending of the film, and it's honestly the best when they're on screen because they just have so much charm together. Um, basically, you get the Warren's daughter in this one who's kind of like an outcast at school and everything because, you know, her parents, and it's all widely known, but they don't really ever go really into it. And so it just, it's kind of, she doesn't really feel like the main character because she doesn't really have a story arc. I like the fact that the guy who picks on her in here, the little boy who does, actually is the, his character actually is the real Warren's daughter's husband in real life and future, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, she's being babysit for her, and there's this black-haired girl who comes over who's friends with the blonde-haired girl who's babysitting her, and she wants to try to contact with her dad, so she goes into the cursed objects room, even though she knows they're cursed, but she's still trying to contact her dad's dead spirit, and she blames herself for his death because she was driving the vehicle when he died, you know, typical rogue crap. She goes in there, and of course she wakes up Annabelle, and all the, the creatures come to life because Annabelle's like a magnet for demons. It's just, it's not very good, because the first half of this movie, literally, like, nothing happens. And there's some bad comment in here from this pizza dude, and there's this boyfriend guy who has hair like Justin Bieber, and, um, who's gonna crush on the blonde haired girl, and he's just totally not needed in the movie. He adds nothing, and when he's here, there's just this constant joke that's just repeated over and over and over called Bob's Got Balls, because the dude, like, worked in a place, uh, a store or whatever, where he was stocking balls one time in the gymnasium, so they keep saying, hey, Bob's Got Balls, and at the end, Patrick Wilson actually says it, which I did laugh at that because it was unexpected by then, but they just keep repeating it nonstop, and you think all the mo demons are pretty much gonna come alive, it's just gonna be like a free-for-all, like a video game, like they're gonna go from one level to the next to the next to the next. But they don't. Uh, most of the time, literally, like nothing happens for the longest time since it's focused on kids and there's like really nothing happening. This almost feels like a little kids and goosebumps episode. But when stuff actually does start happening, the movie does kind of pick up. And there, uh, there's two creatures in here that are actually kind of cool. Really, only three of them really come to life. I mean, there's the. Um, Samurai suit or whatever that's always been kind of cool looking in other movies, but it does literally nothing and uh, The cool ones are the fairy man who you see in one shot where he there's like these floating coins that are shining And when the light gets shined up to his face, they like fall down. That was kind of cool uh, He could have his own movie and the werewolf which is going to be the villain in Conjuring 3 uh, there's the smoke or fog or whatever like mist and when it shows up, it forms into a ghost of a werewolf and it freaking takes off and starts ripping up the tops of vehicles and everything running on it. That was kind of cool, but it kind of took me out of the movie at the same time because this is the Conjuring universe and the actual werewolf here really doesn't make sense. really doesn't gel right because this series is almost all about nothing but demons. But at the same time, I was so happy to see something besides just a stale, stupid demon story again that I can't wait for Conjuring 3 just because it won't have another stupid demon. All in all, the film's just really boring, and the film ends with them just, like, taking Annabelle and putting her back in the case, and that solves the whole problem, and that's the end of it, and some kids just show up to her birthday at the end, because uh, people are, like, afraid of this little girl because of her parents. And that thing is fine. The girl who plays the Warren's daughter does a good job. Nobody here is really bad. The film's just extremely, extremely bland and boring until the end, uh, and then it picks up a little bit, but there's so many stupid and just lazy story points and beats here. Um, I have a feeling that Warner Brothers knows the Conjuring series is kind of like running out of steam, and that's the reason there's the rumor going around that Alexander Aja is going to be like rebooting the Nightmare on the Street. I get the feeling that after this one, this is going to be the final Annabelle film, and we'll probably get Conjuring 3, and that'll be it for Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, except for maybe a cameo here and there. And then they'll focus on just like a, a couple spinoffs uh, that'll just be like one a year or whatever every now and then, and that'll be pretty much it. Uh, so all in all, yeah, this sucked. This franchise is really out of steam. Because they're just running through the motions here and just redoing the same thing. They think they can just redo the same stuff and styles that they did in like the first one or two movies. And that people will just line up at the box office to see it. But lo and behold, this is the lowest grossing of the Annabelle films. And you can see why the, this franchise is, is dying. Uh, so I'll see you guys again with the next video.